The fuzzy and the techie is really about sort of this false opposition between the arts, humanities, and the social sciences and the engineering and computer sciences. At Stanford University, the fuzzies were the people that studied arts, humanities, and social sciences, and I myself was a fuzzy. Uh, you know, and it was really about this kind of false opposition between the two sides. If you go back to 1959, actually, there's a guy named Charles Percy Snow, C.P. Snow, who talked about this false dichotomy between the two cultures, and the two cultures were the sciences and the humanities, and really how we had to bring the two sides together. So as somebody who studied political theory, international relations, yet worked at Google, at Facebook, and as a partner on Sand Hill Road, where my job was to evaluate startup entrepreneurs, um, having met with around 3,000 companies, it was the overwhelming observation that this uh, narrative about Silicon Valley was off, and it wasn't always the techies who were starting the great companies. Oftentimes, it was the fuzzies. It was people with a passion for a problem, really deep context and understanding for what they wanted to solve, partnering with the technologists to create the code and, and build the startup. But really, it was about bringing these two sides together, both fuzzy and techie. We live in a world where this drumbeat of STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math has really sort of taken over the, the narrative. And uh, you know, while code is really important, I think we've lost this perspective on context as well. Where we apply the code, why it's relevant, why we're building technology in the first place. You know, we live in this world where uh, there's so many buzzwords like big data, like machine learning, artificial intelligence, robotics. Um, taking a step back, we forget that it's about how we apply these tools. You know, on their own, they're not good or bad, um, but it's the humans behind them that imbue them with these qualities. So, you know, as we think back to uh, Voltaire, for example, he said, judge a person by their questions, not by their answers. So much of how we apply technology is uh, who's in the room, how do we ask the big questions of what we want to do with the technology tool. We've heard, you know, Martin Ford and Rise of the Robots, how AI and automation is taking over everything. But we forget that sort of in this world of, of, of AI domination, there's also a need for smart thinking humans, not just deep learning AI. Mark Andreessen, who's this wonderful venture capitalist, one of the founders of Netscape, has this great statement where he says, software is eating the world. And I think if you flip that around, we forget that as software eats the world, it touches all these different parts of our lives. And that means that we need more people from more diverse backgrounds, more methodologies, more academic backgrounds contributing to technology and bringing their lens and perspective to bear on what we build. So much we talk about JavaScript and Python and all the new coding languages, um, but we forget you know, we need to have Joyce scholars also learning JavaScript and we need to have Python developers also reading philosophy. It's not about one or the other, it's about breaking down the barriers and giving people the skills that they wouldn't otherwise have. So taking someone technical and giving them the skills in, uh, in philosophy or, or, or the arts and taking somebody who wouldn't otherwise take a coding class and teaching them how you know, the, bare, the very basics of, of coding and STEM literacy. There's this concept that education is a one-way ticket to a certain place, that it's a relevant degree or it's an irrelevant degree. That if your degree says computer science, it means you're free in the future. That if it says comparative literature, it means you're doomed to be a barista. And in fact, we need to think about education uh, not as a one-way plane ticket, but as a passport where we need to collect stamps from all these different places. So if you are an English major, take a data science class, take a coding class. But if you're an engineer, you know, think about taking a literature class. Think about taking a class in philosophy. It's about keeping your education in beta, always being a work in progress, and sort of enabling yourself to learn the new skills as the world moves.